Oh, hello there. Yes, well, it's going to be a warmongery week, isn't it? Indeed. Yes, anyway, hopefully it'll be slightly less blowy today. I'm glad that I didn't get out on the bike. I think that would have, um, yeah, been blowy and wet. Anyway, today I thought we'd just have a look at a particular headline in the education section of The Telegraph, which I think is indicative of everything you need to know about The Daily Telegraph and various other people and what they consider to be important. So it's taxpayer funding PhDs on growing up queer and podcasting and pedagogy for the planet. The successful candidate will be paid a cost stipend, living cost stipend of £19,237 per year, a rate set by the UK Research search innovation. Anyway, yes, it's one of those sort of uh, throthing at the mouth pieces whereby um, the Daily Telegraph expects you to be very upset that our taxpayer money is paying for this. And uh, they get a couple of Tufton Street guys. Gosh, I wonder if they know each other, being in the same building of Alp Mil... Oh, God, I can never say his name. Alt <laughs> Alp Mehmet, uh, Chair of Migration Watch, and John O'Connell from the Taxpayers' Allowance. Yeah, both 55 Tufton Street guys. Um, it's worthwhile just thinking about what they've said. Um, how absurd, says Alp. Many people would question the value of such research. Yeah, many people would. I don't know. But for the taxpayer to be footing the bill for foreign students to do it is sheer lunacy. What possible can, can value can there be in it for countries struggling to feed their people? We should be helping them produce their engineers, doctors and scientists, not exporting wokery and grievance ideology. Yes. Um... Not particularly sure from the piece where he's got the foreign students from, but there we are. John O'Connell said, Taxpayers will be shocked about the number of dodgy doctorates they're playing for. What academic freedom... While academic freedom is sacred, projects such as these could come, should come from university croppers, not the treasuries. Ministers need to bring in much stricter guidelines for when to fund these degrees. Yes, indeed, you see, we need a lot more accountants, apparently, even though it's a job that AI will make redundant in about five years. Yes, that's what we need. We need a lot more people who are uh, maths, something or other maths, isn't it? Because we need to be this thrusting, dynamic, uh, Great Britain limited on the world stage. And we can't possibly do that if we're funding people to do PhDs on things that we don't really think are important. But, of course, all human knowledge is valuable. And the problem, the thing that these people don't often see, you'll be reminded, perhaps, that these people would be very keen on funding economics. And there are vast numbers of... Um, uh, right-wing groups that fund economics uh, PhDs, usually in subjects like um, just how brilliant is libertarianism and how Chile is an example from the 1970s and what we should do, uh, those kind of things. Um, they get lots and lots of students to do that. There's quite a bit of money that's swashing around for that. Um, it's utter junk, of course, and these people will often jump on uh, OBR forecasts. So, yeah, they're always wrong, aren't they? Just always wrong. We can't trust them if they don't really fancy see them or they're always right especially alp loves obr forecasts for migration because they tend to be really bang on the money but the thing is that all knowledge is useful and um very often these people are very very sidelined by simple events that happen events dear boy events in society they just simply don't see them coming until magically there is a crisis which i guess for these people is fine because that's the the currency they deal in is you know continue crisis but these people really don't see things coming back in the 1930s think about this historically back in the 1930s we had mass observation and for those of you that don't know that was when the government very, very directly sought to um, find out as much information about people's lives as it could in order to inform um, social policy. And it worked extremely well up until basically the late 1940s when it kind of dribbled away. Um, obviously, we still have the census, but um, this was an ongoing project and we know so much about the reasons for what worked in terms of po po poverty uh, alleviation in the 1930s and what didn't almost everything basically but we know about the minutiae of people's lives in the way that we don't these days think about the recent stuff about around the CASA report okay about um, trans youth now 
those of us that have been working in education for a period of time, um, certainly for the last 10 years, anyone that's out there, will have noticed that there are very, very much greater numbers of, of students that are presenting as trans. It would be useful to know why. It would be useful to do research in these things so that we make informed decisions rather than simply burying our head in the sand and saying, if we ban it, it'll go away. It doesn't work then didn't work you know for uh, things like section 28 and it sure as hell won't work now if we don't know what's coming down the pipeline if we're not fl if people are not flagging stuff up by you know doing research into it we will end up once again in a perpetual state of crisis because these people who very much hold the levers of power in terms of what is done about things will be constantly blindsided. It's part of the reason why our present government flounders with everything. It is in a perpetual state of crisis because it never, ever, ever sees things coming that the rest of us blindingly, obviously can do because, you know, we live in the real world. I mean, I get um, on almost on a daily basis suggestions of uh, PhD works that I might like to look at and you know um, certainly about three or four times a week I think to myself god I wish I had a bit more money and I could actually pay to to read that um, I do dip into things that take my fancy for example at the moment I'm reading uh, more on uh, the commons and Peter Lundberg must read author absolutely superb PhD level stuff this is a collection of his writings about uh, enclosure acts and the way that it affected people's livelihood in the past. Oh, what a waste of time that is. Well, no, it has a distinct bearing on where we are now because we are once again having more and more of our common things enclosed. Yes, we used to have ancient rights to these things which have been stripped away from us. Think about <laughs> Thames Water et al. Yeah, that's a fine example of a newly enclosed space. You used to think that f that water was a kind of basic right. It isn't, mate. You'll have to pay for it over and over again because the king says so. That's what that's about. Yeah? But, of course, once again, these people would say, oh, there's no value in that. There is. There is. There is. Because some of us can see exactly what's coming down the line. We know full well. And that's why some of us, perhaps, in our own little way, might be doing sort of daily YouTube videos just to say, I think this is going to be a problem, yeah? Because Julia Hartley Brewer and the rest of them in their metaphorical, I don't know, it's not, what's, what's, <laughs> what's, what's the antithesis of an ivory tower? I'm not really quite sure. Um, sunken pit. Um, just can't see it. Just cannot see it. They live in a world where they cannot see what so many things that you and I find blindingly obvious are coming. And they also don't see why they should look into the future about what the blindingly obvious things are going to happen. They just can't see it. It would be nice if they could prick up their ears a little bit more and understand that the value of knowledge is worthwhile in its own right. OK, we can't build a successful economy on people training to be accountants. That isn't the way that economics works. Just ask somebody who isn't being funded by a right wing think tank. Anyway, do have a lovely Tuesday. Uh, yeah, we'll see exactly what's going to happen. Um, yeah, I think Pussycat's going to be once again fairly unhappy about getting damp. Do enjoy it.